creating your own job, aimed at providing you with resources and assistance to start your own business. Focusing on customer benefits, analyzing the marketplace, financial forecasting, financial assistance, creating your own job. Welcome to Creating Your Own Job, a series that features uh, topics and experts to help you start, your, start and grow your own business. I'm Ben Eason, President of the Network Planet and Board President of Tampa Bay Community Network, where you can take video production training and have your own show on our cable te television channels and the internet. Today we're talking about designing your website. Uh, with me are Rashad Brown, who's the uh, web graphics designer for Hillsborough Community College, and uh, Chrysia Ray, who's a multimedia instructor at the International Academy of Design and Technology. She's also senior interactive developer at Ad Partners, which is a full service ad agency. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Thank you. So, Chrissy, tell us a little bit about, uh, I'm going to shorten the name to IADT, but International Academy of Design and Technology. Um, well, as its name sort of suggests, um, the primary focus uh, there is blending design and technology um, and creating kind of a, a whole approach out of it. Uh, they have a number of different courses. They do um, graphic design, web design and development. Uh, they also do things like fashion design, interior design, photography. So they've got a lot of different avenues. And you are the instructor of, uh, you teach people how to build their websites? Uh, uh, I teach some of those classes, yes. Okay. From, you know, so if I didn't know anything about it, you could teach me, and if I was, a, if I was somewhat experienced, you could help me get Yeah, I, I teach all levels, yes. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. And Rashad, uh, give us a little bit of uh, overview of what you're doing at HCC. Okay, I'm the current uh, web and graphic designer uh, for Hillsborough Community College. Um, our marketing department, uh, it's made up of a team of, of about five individuals. We have three marketing managers, and we have two uh, web and graphic designers, including myself and then we have our, our uh, marketing director. And uh, we basically service uh, all five campuses. Uh, we, have, um, we have a campus in Ybor City, a uh, campus uh, in, our, in South Shore, uh, Brandon, Del Mabry, and um, in our district campus. And we develop everything from print ads uh, to maintenance on our website, w whether it's uh, web ads or web banners. Um, so we handle a wide range of tasks for the college. So when we're talking about building a website, uh, I think the, uh, a, a typical person that might be sort of starting up a business would you know, have something relatively simple. Mm -hmm. But I guess uh, in uh, an HCC environment, that's got to be a pretty complicated website. So, uh, well, um, I, I would say it's, it's the most in involved uh, yeah. web project that I've been a part of. Um, going on two years now with the college and uh, it was a project that I started when I started day one. Um, started from the redesign of the site. Uh, so you know it, it started from meeting with our, our marketing team, uh, you know looking at the current website, uh, addressing issues as far as uh, uh, networking or navigation and making sure that this new design is very easy and user friendly. So could I basically, uh, uh, with the HCC, I, I could go sign up for courses on it, I'd pay for the courses on it, Absolutely. so all these little things that make it easy on the front end, you're, you're scrambling around the back to make sure everything kind of works. Ab absolutely. So and Chrissy, what's, um, what, uh, I know that in your ad agency world, you, you deal with a lot of complicated websites uh, over there, but what kinds of What's the most complicated site you've been working on these days? Um, I would say probably a site that I just recently completed for a local restaurant franchise. And um, the, the site itself is you know, pretty much what you'd expect from a restaurant site. It offers menus, locations, hours. Um, but they had some pretty specific needs as far as the back end of the website. Um, they needed to be able to have a customized content management system for their franchisees where they can log in, manage their locations, the hours, um, the information that displays, and especially their menus. Um, they build their menus online through the website. It displays on the website for people to see, but then they also generate print-ready PDFs that they can print in-store for their, um, the ones that they give out to the customers. And, um, it's also set up so that all the same information will feed into a mobile app that we're creating for okay. them. Very nice. Wow, all right. So 
you guys are messing around with some really complicated stuff, so that's um, that's interesting. <laughs> well, let's let's kind of let's kind of go all the way back and sort of uh, uh, try to figure out, you know. So uh, let's start with uh, I've got a Facebook, you know. If I'm can I accomplish what I want to accomplish with just a Facebook page? Do I really have to go all the way to building a website? What should I be thinking about if I'm even considering whether or not I should do a website or or do something a lot simpler, like try to run something off my Facebook page? Well, you know, you definitely want to have a website. Uh, because you know restricting your business or your agency to just Facebook that's rest restricting your uh, your community it's it's restricting your audience um, not everyone has a Facebook account so for every user that does not have a Facebook account they will not know about your business um, it, it's very important to have a uh, Facebook page to supplement your website because that you know, it, it's an aid to drive traffic to your website, but you should not depend on Facebook alone uh, for marketing or to get the word out of your business. Okay, so, uh, all right, so that's, uh, I'm a believer. Then, uh, so I guess it's like, uh, you know, renting some office space and sure. not putting a sign up to, you know, to let anybody know that you're, you're actually working mm -hmm. in there. So, uh, so then, okay, so now we're at the, at the decision of a, of a, uh, building a website, so um, so so how much does it cost for a website? So, uh, uh, Priscilla, what? How much? How much? Uh, 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 how much for a website? That depends. The, yeah. the answer to that is always that depends because okay. it um, it very much depends on what you need out of the website. Mm -hmm. um, there's many different levels, um, and I would say actually that's like the first thing that a small business owner should do when they're sitting down to think of a website is figure out what do they need it to do. What is the purpose of this? Um, I mean, if they basically need what I consider like a brochure site, where they just need their hours and their um, location uh, out there, maybe a list of their services, you know, that's, that's more straightforward. We're talking a, um, a lower tier on the pricing on that. Okay. But maybe they need forms. They need to collect information from people online. They need to book things, schedule things, sell products. You know, it, it okay, completely that depends. This is a com complexity. And so, um, Rashad, where do, where do we go? Um, where does it get expensive? Where does it, um, uh, okay, so brochureware, I've heard that, mm -hmm. that term uh, around a little bit. That's just, just type in your, I guess you can do that in one page if you, if you want to, right? Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, how long would it take, uh, you know, sort of a very simple brochureware, one page website to, to, to get up? You know, something like that can be developed in, you know, as, 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 as much as a day or so. Um, it, but it, it, it really just depends on the designer. Everyone works differently. Um, when it comes to web development, web design, it's all about planning. It's all about consulting with the customer, finding out their wants, finding out their needs. And then once you, once you have their ideas and, you know, you know, what they want, if they want a form, if they want you know, moving objects or whatever, then, you know, as a designer, as, as a developer, you go to your drafting board and begin to draft out your ideas of, of how you think the website, the website should look according to the customer's thoughts and ideas. So, so this ballpark dollars, 500 bucks um, to, you know, be in the, in the game, or is it really a thousand bucks? It, it, it's, it, again, it depends. But am I in the range, 500 yeah, to 1,000 yeah. bucks, uh, something you know, like that? Maybe yeah. if I have a cousin that's pretty smart, I could do it for <laughs> 150 bucks, Of course bucks. not, uh, and you know, I, if, if you know someone doing a website for $150, send them my way, okay. <laughs> please. <laughs> um, but you know, it, it, it really just depends on how the designer charges. Some, some people, uh, they charge a flat rate. They say, you know, you know, this is what you want, I can do your website for $1,000. Uh, some people charge hourly. You know, um, you know, I charge fifty dollars an hour, a hundred dollars an hour, and, and I'm going to uh, kind of estimate that it'll take ten hours for me to complete your website. Okay. So that's how you know you would give them a price based off of that. And of course, uh, as Chrissy was saying, other bells and whistles um, kind of determine the price fluctuation as far as if. The person, if the customer wants a form on their site, okay. um, or if, if they want to have any type of uh, interaction uh, from the customer to the user, so those types of things determine price as well. Okay, 
So, Chrissy, about, okay, so we're in the $500 to $1,000 range. And so if let's just say that I'm, I'm, we're, we're having a conversation about the website, at what point in time does it get expensive? You know, I guess if, uh, uh, I guess if I'm, you know, if you're picking up that I'm finicky and I'm going to make you go back and do it, you know, over and over again, the price might go up. Is that? Uh... Well, um, what I like to do is first sit down with um, the customer and find out what it is they need, you know, because a lot of times um, they need to kind of put their ideas together. Yeah. So I like to walk through and say, well, what do you need it to do? Explain to me what you want this site to do, and then you can start walking through the what the bells and whistles and the design and all that okay. needs to be. From that then, I like to build a, a list of, okay, these are the requirements, these are what it needs to have, and then also provide kind of a list of, and this is what you know is provided for this price. So that's where you get into, especially if, if you do kind of feel like, well, maybe there's going to be a lot of revisions on the design or something, you kind of want to state out there up front so that every, it's fair for everybody, um, you know, okay, this includes X amount of full revisions, and then after that, you know, it may inc increase the time allotted for this, it may increase the cost. Okay. Um, you know, so it's good to be upfront. And this may be just a dumb question, but um, could I just do this myself? I mean, do I, do I really need to hire somebody? How would I, how would I go through that uh, thought process? Well, that's kind of when it just takes that individual um, to sit down and just be realistic and determine what it is they want. Um, if a person is familiar with coding, uh, the coding that it takes to develop a website, sure. You know, if, if you're familiar with the HTML5 and the CSS and, you know, some, you know, the PHPs. And if I couldn't even interpret what you just said in those initials, <laughs> I would hire somebody. Is absolutely, okay. absolutely. <laughs> All right. Um, and so how would I find, how would I find uh, somebody to build uh, a website? Where would I go to, um, uh, obviously, uh, you guys are both... Um, uh, fully employed and uh, so but where would I go to find somebody to, to build me a website? Um, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. Um, word of mouth is good, meaning if you know someone who's had a good experience getting their website built, talk to them, find out who did it, because um, then you've got a little bit of a gauge on whether this is good work or not. Um, otherwise, you know, you can look around online. Uh, lots of developers and designers have their sites online. Um, sometimes, if, especially for a small business starting out, if you go with another small business who's doing the design and development, you know, sometimes that, that can uh, lower your costs, but you, know, you want to make sure that they're going to do a good job for you, too. Okay. So, so I, I basically would go out just like I was picking out some furniture or some clothes or something like around. that. If, yeah. I like, uh, if I like what the work is and I like the way the site kind of feels to me, the look and feel piece yeah. of it, then, yeah. okay, now we're in the ballpark and then... Uh, and then I would, um, and then would you, would, would you shop a few people? How would you, of how course. would you do it? I mean, you know, just like any other yeah. major purchase, I mean, a, a website is an investment, um, so, you know, especially if it's your business that, that you're looking to have some type of longevity, it's an investment. So um, the, the smart thing would be to, you know, to shop around, compare prices, because I can guarantee you when you uh, reach out to three different uh, designers or developers, they're going to give you three different prices. Um, so it would be a great idea to shop around. Okay. Yeah. And what would I ask? What would I? Um, so let me, let me go to one other place. Um, so it's five hundred bucks to a thousand bucks to build me a site, but uh, what's the relationship afterwards? What What am I looking for? Uh, and how much How much would it cost me? you know, going forward. So I've got mm -hmm. my site built and it looks great and I've had a good experience. Mm -hmm. Now what's my relationship to my web designer? Well, the answer to that, it can be somewhat complex. Uh, one, it would depend on on your expertise when it comes to web design and if, you, uh, if you're if you familiar with coding. Um, two, it would depend on how the designer or developer designed your site. Um, you know, their tools such as WordPress, uh, which are which are somewhat template based, and they're tailored towards the the user that's not uh, as code savvy. So it it allows you to to use a template and, and update it and make it yours. And it uh, it it basically allows you to to go in and, and be able to make updates to your site. Now that's the site that's developed on, by WordPress. Now if you have a developer or designer 
who created your site strictly in Dreamweaver and strictly in coding, and they created the code from the ground up, and you're not that versed in coding, you're going to have some problems five, five, five months from now when it comes to updating your site. Okay. So those are things that, that you should discuss up front with, with the designer. You know, how is it going to be designed? Where is it going to be housed? And, you know, will I be able to make updates? Are you going to be making the, the updates or maintenance? And what are your maintenance uh, prices? Okay. So, Christina, what I do, uh, is, it, um, is it beneficial just to be as simplistic as possible with the website? Just to, I mean, I'm, if I'm a novice getting in, am I better to just stay as simple as possible until I can get my... Uh, get my site up and then start to, to move forward and get comfortable? Um, I'd say it depends on what you need it to do. Yeah. Um, I mean, if what you need is a simple site, then yeah, you want to stay with, um, you don't want to try and do anything that isn't essential to your business. But at the same point, if you're going to put the expense into making a website, you want to think, what do I want this to do? What might I want it to do in the future? Because even if there's something that you're not ready to do right now, like maybe right now you just need one of these brochure sites we're talking about where it's like, okay, I just need my info out there. But at some point I want to maybe have a form where I can collect custom quotes or I can um, you know, sell products. It's good to discuss that with the developer you're working with. Even if you're saying, I'm not going to do this right now, but this is the future. I want a phase two at some point that does this because that can change how you set the website up to start with. Okay, and absolutely. then you won't have to actually redo the whole site when it's time to do that. You know, you can add on the piece. Okay. So I, I'm hearing that you want to find, um, uh, obviously get your needs met when, so the, when the website's up, it's helping your business mm -hmm. and it's, it's, a, it's an asset to your business. Right. And I'm also hearing, so when you're picking out what the, the designer, you're also asking that designer what, what programming or, or what program platform are they using or content management system. Mm -hmm. And if it's easy or hard, you're going to pay for it uh, down the line. If it's hard, I guess, but a harder site might be more robust down the line. You could do a lot more things with it, maybe. Is that the... I mean, it, it's just about, you know, your abilities and, and, and your knowledge when it comes to design. I wouldn't necessarily say hard or easy because web development to me is not fairly hard, but to the person that's not familiar with it, okay. it's, it's, you know. So it, it's just about being upfront and, and asking as many questions yes. as okay. possible uh, in the beginning phases. Okay. And a good designer, a good developer, they will, you know, even if the customer doesn't ask these things, a good designer will ask those types of questions. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, um, do you know coding? You know, would you like to keep up your site or, or will you need someone to maintain your site? A good, uh, a good designer will kind of probe those kind of questions out of the user. Okay, I see. Um, and let's talk a little bit about um, sort of what's to come. Uh, obviously, we're talking a lot about the websites mm -hmm. and stuff, but I, I, I saw a statistic the other day, 65% of all Google searches are now made on, a, on mobile phones, yeah. which is just amazing because I guess that number's kind of come out of, uh, you know, really from the last couple of years, it's been yeah. accelerating. But the idea that, uh, that that many people are accessing their information on smartphones or something. But how does that factor into, uh, uh, Chrissy, how does that factor into, the, the, into, the, into my decision about a website? Um, well, that's definitely something that you want to think about and something to discuss with the designer developer when you're doing it is if it's important to you to reach the mobile users, which it really should be in this day and age, um, then you need to look at how do you want to do that. Um, two ways that that's typically handled is either you can have a, a targeted mobile site that's separate and different from your, your main site and specifically optimized for the mobile users in the smartphones, um, or you can have your whole site be done in uh, responsive design, so it will, you know, expand, shrink, rearrange itself to match the screen size of whatever device you're viewing it on. I got you. And uh, and and how would and how would you think through that, Rashad? How would how would you go through the? Um, you know, I'm just barely literate yeah. about putting my, my website up. Uh, how would I now I, then thinking about this mobile piece? The first thing that I, I would say to think about is maintenance. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to maintaining a mobile site versus a responsive site, uh, when you have a, a mobile site, um, you're updating your website and you're updating the mobile site. 
So when you change a, a, a photo or content on your site that's on the, on the World Wide Web, uh, you would also have to go to your mobile site and update that same content versus the responsive site where it's one, it's one website and it just adjusts according to whatever platform you're viewing your site from. I got you. So it's really how much time uh, are you going to put into that site and then what do you expect to get out of it? Well, it sounds expensive now. So I'm like, well, now we're sort of, well, I thought we were in the $500 to $1,000 <laughs> range with a little, you know, a little monthly fee. So where are we, uh, is this an additional uh, expense on the mobile side? How do you think about the money uh, on that? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. And, and that's just something that you incorporate into uh, your, your price. And more than likely, that, that's something that you would try to push the user to go for. Um, it's, it's much more effective uh, to have either a mobile site or something responsive when it comes to your users. Because, you know, when you think about a website layout, when you're viewing it from your computer or when you're viewing it from uh, a tablet, m m most of the time the orientation is uh, landscape. But okay. when you're on your mobile phone, it's vertical or a portrait. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times when, when you have pertinent information at the top of your page or at the bottom of your page, the user can miss some of that information if they view it from a mobile and it's not responsive or, or if you don't have a specific mobile site. Okay. So, you know, you could very easily uh, miss the users when it comes to certain uh, information. Okay. So now if I'm uh, just going a little further, now that let's say I have the, the website, I guess you can attach a, uh, I can now have my own email that, uh, that has the same address as my website. Is that right? Yeah. Absolutely. Is that an easy thing or is that another $500 or uh, $1,000? <laughs> no, um, it depends on your, your setup. The, um, when you're saying having a, an email that goes with your website, you're, you're referring to having like your name at yourwebsite.com. Yes, yes. And that's, um, that's a function of usually wherever you've got your domain name registered and perhaps your site hosting. Okay. Um, and if you get it through the company doing that, usually they'll have pre-made packages. It's pretty straightforward. Right. Um, if you're running on a custom server or something like that, that's a different issue. But I'm imagining most people um, that we're talking about would be doing a, uh, you know, a hosting with like a GoDaddy or something like that. Right. And then you just purchase an email package through them and you're fairly set Is to go. Is it $20, $30 kind of thing? Uh, Depends on the provider. But okay. they usually list their prices out fairly, uh, fairly clearly. Okay. And then you'll have a, uh, I guess, let's just say it's a, uh, the web hosting company, I guess, the one mm -hmm. that's actually um, serving up all of your content, stuff like that. What would what would you typically pay for a web hosting for a, a normal business? What's the ballpark? Um, well, there's there, there's kind of two phases to that. Uh, as Chrissy was saying, um, you know, there's web hosting services like GoDaddy, Blue Gator, um, and you know, the first phase would be to purchase your domain or your URL or your, you know, the, the name of your site, the okay. www.whateveryoursiteis.com. Those uh, you can usually f buy fairly cheap um, from about $5 to about $20. And um, so that's your domain. The second phase would be uh, to purchase your hosting space. So the actual space that your website will be hosted on. Um, and those usually range uh, about a good $100 a year, mm -hmm. um, and, and it really depends on the, uh, on the hosting company as well. Okay. So before you even get to charging for design, charging for you know, consulting, it's, it's good to let the user know up front, you know, just to get your website on the internet, it's going to at least be about a good $150 just to get your, your, your okay. domain uh, and your URL. So. I got you. Your hosting space, yeah. Um, okay, so uh, it all sounds like uh, you can kind of get. And then, how do you know? How do you know what? Um, let's say I got the site up. How do you know who's visiting and uh, and what they're doing? What are the tools that are out there to do that? Well, uh, Google has an awesome free uh, application called Google Analytics, and uh, I'm pretty sure Chrissy can attest. It's so useful. Um, yeah. it, Google. Analytics can track so many things when it comes to your site. It will track uh, how many people visit your, your, your site as a whole. Uh, it tracks how many people visit pages, uh, the specific pages. 
um, it tracks the bounce rate, which is how long a person stays on your site before they go somewhere else. So that's, mm -hmm. that's a very interesting number that, that you should look at to see if people are going to your site and it's like, oh, I don't, I don't like the way this looks, let me get out of here. Yeah. Um, it, it also uh, attracts, um, it, it also uh, looks at the amount of clicks that you get per link per page and it's broken up into percentages. Uh -huh. So say you have your home link, your about link, your uh, photos link, and a contact link. Uh -huh. That's four That's four links On to- four different pages. No, just for your home page. Okay. Uh, Google, what Google Analytics does, it'll tell you 20, uh, your home link, it got 20% of the clicks. Uh, your about link, it received 15% of the clicks, and it, it uh, divides it, of course, into a hundred percent ratio. I got you. So, and Chrissy, if I had a if I had a fancy site like the restaurant one you're talking mm -hmm. about, can it keep track of you know how many orders I had and how much how much money I made? Uh, um, it would now if you're talking about orders placed through a site, that would be more the function of whatever shopping cart software you're mm -hmm. using to track your sales okay. and things like that. But analytics can track things like technology, like we were talking about desktop and mobile. Okay. Um, it'll show you, you know, how many people came to your site on a mobile device, yeah. how many people came there on a desktop computer. It'll even tell you what type. Was it iPhone? Was it iPad? Was it Android? Okay. Um, you know, so that's helpful. And you, can you also tell what part, you know, what, did they come from Tampa or yes. Brandon? Or yes, it'll, it'll break around? it down, give you this great map that shows you where everybody's coming from. You got, you know, so many hits from Tampa, so many from Brandon, so many from, you know, all over the country. Wow, yeah, but it's, yeah. are things getting more complicated or are they getting simpler out there? Because it sounds pretty complicated. Uh, well, um, you know, what a lot of developers and companies are doing now, it, it's, it seems like uh, a very popular trend is to make things user friendly. Um, so, you know, whether a, a person is versed in different types of coding, um, it's, it's really up to the individual, it's up to the developer to, to remain current on what's out there because right. it changes every day. But on the user end, um, programs are, are being developed, you know, to make it very simple, to make it seem very, uh, to make to make things flow when it comes to navigating the site. Chrissy, are you seeing it getting simpler? Or are you get seeing it getting more complicated? I, I would say both. Yeah. Uh, both. Some things get easier. <laughs> some things get harder. Usually, for the developer, things get harder because more <laughs> right. technology comes out that you got to cover, more devices you have to program for. Um, but like you, he was saying, for the um, for the user, I would say things are getting easier yeah. okay. because that's the focus. <laughs> well, Really appreciate it. Thanks for your helpful advice and sharing your knowledge. We appreciate it, and our viewers do. Thanks for thanks for tuning in. We'll uh, see you next time. Thank you.